Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Upal Vasaroy, and I am the Vice President of Research at Longevity Foundation, a patient advocacy group in the United States. It is my delight to describe and present the patient perspective on Dr. Nobuyuki Takahashi's abstract titled, Polyxome Sequencing Reveals the Potential Role of Hereditary Predisposition in Small Cell Lung Cancer, a Tobacco-Related Cancer. Dr. Takahashi and his team are located at the National Cancer Institute in the United States. Small cell lung cancer is a subtype of lung cancer. About 15% of all lung cancer cases are small cell lung cancer. We have not seen a major improvement in the outcomes of small cell lung cancer over the past two decades. Also, small cell lung cancer is treated as a single disease, unlike lung adenocarcinoma, which is divided into molecular subsets based on the presence of driver mutations such as EGFR or ALK. In addition, we do not have a good technique to detect small cell lung cancer early. Currently, low-dose CT scanning is recommended to detect lung cancer early, but unfortunately, LDCT is not very good at detecting small cell lung cancer because these cancers are very aggressive and grow very quickly. So what did Taka, Dr. Takahashi and his team do? Dr. Takahashi and his team were interested in learning if there is a hereditary predisposition to small cell lung cancer, meaning is the risk of developing small cell lung cancer hereditary and can this risk be transmitted from parents to their children? This hypothesis is very similar to the association of the BRCA1 gene to breast and ovarian cancer where mutations in the BRCA1 gene are very clearly linked to the risk of developing breast or ovarian cancer. So Dr. Takahashi and his team collected extensive data from a group of 87 small cell lung cancer patients. Specifically, they were looking at characteristics of their tumor, family history of cancer, and the presence of other risk factors. When they started looking at the tumor, they were specifically looking at two pieces. One was, what are the characteristics? What are the mutations in the tumor? The second thing that they were looking at are what are some germline mutations in these patients? Now, before we get into germline mutations, I want to tell you a little bit about what germline mutations are. Germline mutations are unique mutations that can be passed from parents to their children. They are different from somatic mutations which occur in the cells of the body. Now, most mutations that you've heard of in lung cancer are somatic mutations. For example, mutations in the EJFR gene or ALK gene are usually somatic mutations. To understand germline mutations in these patients, Dr. Takahashi sequenced blood samples from these patients. Blood cells are a very good source to understand germline mutations. And they specifically used a technique called whole exome sequencing. So what did they find? In the 87 patients that they analyzed, Dr. Takahashi found that 68% of these patients had a family history of lung cancer. When they analyzed their DNA, the research team found that 44% of the patients had a pathogenic or a likely pathogenic mutation, meaning that these germline mutations may be linked to the development of small cell lung cancer. About 10% of these patients had a mutation in an actionable gene, meaning that these mutations can be linked to a drug or a treatment. And lastly, they found that 60% of these mutations were found in genes involved in repairing DNA. And this finding is not surprising. When they started looking at individual patients, they found that one specific patient had a mutation in a gene called MUTYH. And this mutation was also found in family members of this patient with small cell lung cancer, clearly making an association with mutations and family risk. Lastly, they looked at individual patients to see if there was a possibility of linking these mutations to treatment. 
one such mutation was found in the BRIP gene and the patient whose tumor had a BRIP mutation responded to a drug combination, two drugs in this case, CRLZ101 and Oloparib. This clearly shows that information from these germline mutations can be linked to treatment as well. Why is this research important? This research is incredibly important for two reasons. First, it can give us a clear direction for the early detection of small cell lung cancer. Secondly, information from these mutations can also help us match patients to the right treatment. We are very grateful to Dr. Takahashi and his team for this very important research, which may one day impact how we detect and treat small cell lung cancer.